Hi guys! In this video we'll be looking at magnetic force on a charged particle, path of the charged particle, electron deflection tube, and we'll finish with the summary. Let's think about the magnetic force acting on a charged particle. Moving charged particles can be found in many situations, including conductors, electron guns, and particle accelerators. For example, as a current goes through a solenoid, electrons are travelling through the solenoid. Electrons are also fired out of electron guns. And moving charged particles are also present in particle accelerators, like the Large Hadron Collider. In this example, a proton has been accelerated out of the particle accelerator. From our understanding of conductors, in the next few videos we're going to build a knowledge of the forces on single charged particles in a magnetic field. Let's start by imagining a positively charged proton moving freely in a direction perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field. So our uniform magnetic field is pointing into the plane of the paper and the proton is moving perpendicular to it. As the proton is charged and moving in a magnetic field, it experiences a force. So say the proton is moving in the magnetic field created by a bar magnet. It's going to experience a certain force on it. The relative direction of a force on a charged particle in a magnetic field can be obtained using Fleming's left hand rule. So if we take our left hand and extend the thumb and the first two fingers, the force is going to point in the same direction as the thumb, the magnetic field in the same direction as the first finger, and finally the conventional current is going to point in the direction of the second finger. Recall that conventional current is the direction of positive charge flow, so we can also call the second finger the direction of motion of a positive charge. Since the proton is positive, the direction of the force it experiences can be read directly from Fleming's left-hand rule. So here, the first finger is representing the magnetic field into the plane of the page, and the direction of motion is in the direction of the second finger, and it's pointing from left to right. And then the thumb points in the direction of the force, which we can see as upwards. When dealing with a negative charge, we can use our right hand. So this time, if we use our right hand, the first finger is still going to point in the direction of the magnetic field, and the thumb is going to point in the same direction as the force. But this time, the second finger is going to point in the direction of motion of a negative charge. We can never use our right hand when we're dealing with current, only for motion of negative charges. A negative charge, like an electron, would have to move in the opposite direction to a proton to experience the same force. So here we have a proton, and its direction of motion is from left to right. And so if we illustrate this on our left hand, we can see that the magnetic field points into the plane of the paper, and the direction of motion of the proton is from left to right and therefore the force acts upwards. In order for our electron, which is negatively charged, to experience the same force upwards as the proton, using our right hand and having force in the same direction as the thumb and magnetic field strength in the same direction as the first finger, we can see that the direction of motion, which is given by the second finger, is from right to left. So it's opposite to the proton. Now we're going to think about the path that a charged particle might follow in a magnetic field. The force on a charged particle due to a magnetic field is always perpendicular to the particle's direction of motion. So here's our direction of motion. And if we use our left hand rule, we'll find out that the force is acting downwards and it is perpendicular to the direction of motion. Recall that the work done on an object is equal to the force in the direction of motion of the object multiplied by the displacement. So the work done in joules, W, is equal to the force applied in the direction of motion, F, which is measured in newtons, times displacement, S, 
which is measured in metres. Note that velocity is perpendicular to the direction of the force, so there's never any displacement in the direction of force, and so the work done is zero. Since we have no force applied in the direction of the particle's velocity, no work is going to be done by the magnetic field on the particle. So our velocity is perpendicular to the force. And this means that the kinetic energy and speed of the charge must be constant. So our kinetic energy is a constant. And recall that our formula for kinetic energy is a half times mass times the magnitude of velocity squared. And we know that mass remains constant throughout. So the kinetic energy is constant. Therefore, the magnitude of velocity, or the speed, must also be constant. However, the force acting on the particle will still result in a change of velocity. Although the speed is constant, its direction is going to change. So here we see the force on the particle causing the direction of motion to change. And note that the speed remains constant. The direction of velocity is constrained to the plane of the screen because it must remain perpendicular to the magnetic field and force. So here we see that although the direction of motion is changing, the velocity is always in the same plane and is always perpendicular to the force. This means that the force on the particle will always be directed inwards, so it will move in a circular path. And we can see here that the force on the particle causes it to move in a circular path and that the velocity is always perpendicular to the force. And this is how we're able to trap charged particles in a certain region. And this is used in particle accelerators. Now we're going to discuss a particular use of the movement of charged particles in a magnetic field, which is the electron deflection tube. We can demonstrate the circular path of charged particles using an electron deflection tube. This consists of several elements. Firstly, an anode, which is supplied with a high voltage. The anode sends a beam of electrons into a vacuum tube, and we can see the electron track moving through the vacuum tube. There's also a screen and a magnetic field going into the screen. The direction that the charged particle curves within a uniform magnetic field reveals whether it is positive or negatively charged. So our first finger points into the plane of the paper, and if the current is pointing in this direction, then the force is going to point downwards. So we see from the direction of our curved track that the force is pointing downwards. And using our left hand rule, we see that conventional current would be pointing in this direction, which remember is the flow of positively charged particles. However, we see that the direction of motion is opposite to this because the anode is firing electrons in this direction. And this means that our beam of particles must be negative. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap by smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.